Hello, this is day 79 of reading one canto of the Divine Comedy every single day. We are on Paradiso Canto 12, which I'll read from the Longfellow translation before giving some quick comments. Soon as the blessed flame had taken up the final word to give it utterance, began the holy millstone to revolve, and in its gyre had not turned wholly round before another in a ring and closed it, and motion joined to motion, song to song, song that as greatly doth transcend our muses, our sirens and those dulcet clarions, as primal splendor that which is reflected. And as our span athwart a tender cloud, two rainbows parallel and like in color, when Juno to her handmaid gives command, the one without, born of the one within, like to the speaking of that vagrant one, whom love consumed as doth the sun the vapors. And make the people here, through covenant God set with Noah, presageful of the world that shall no more be covered with a flood, in such wise of those sempiternal roses, the garlands twain encompassed us about, and thus the outer to the inner answered. After the dance and other grand rejoicings, both of the singing and the flaming forth, effulgence with effulgence blithe and tender, together at once with one accord had stopped, even as the eyes that, as volition moves them, must needs together shut and lift themselves, out of the heart of one of the new lights there came a voice, that needle to the star made me appear in turning thitherward. And it began, The love that makes me fair draws me to speak about the other leader, by whom so well is spoken here of mine. Tis right, where one is, to bring in the other, that, as they were united in their warfare, together likewise may their glory shine. The soldiery of Christ, which it had cost so dear to arm again, behind the standard moved slow and doubtful, and in numbers few. When the emperor who reigneth evermore provided for the host that was in peril, through grace alone and not that it was worthy, and, as we said, he to his bride brought succor with champions twain, at whose deed, at whose word, the straggling people were together drawn. Within that region where the sweet west wind rises to open the new leaves, wherewith Europe is seen to clothe herself afresh, not far off from the beating of the waves behind which in his long career the sun sometimes conceals himself from every man, is situate the fortunate Calahora, under protection of the mighty shield in which the lion subject is and sovereign. Therein was born the amorous paramour of Christian faith, the athlete consecrate, kind to his own and cruel to his foes, and when it was created was his mind replete with such a living energy that in his mother her it made prophetic. As soon as the espousals were complete between him and the faith at Holy Font, where they with mutual safety dowered each other, the woman, who for him had given assent, saw in a dream the admirable fruit that issue would from him and from his heirs. And that he might be construed as he was, a spirit from this place went forth to name him with his possessive whose he wholly was. Dominic he was called, and him I speak of even as the husbandman whom Christ elected to his garden to assist him. Envoy and servant sooth he seemed of Christ, for the first love made manifest in him was the first counsel that was given by Christ. Silent and wakeful many a time was he, discovered by his nurse upon the ground, as if he would have said, For this I came. O thou his father, Felix verily, O thou his mother, verily, Joanna, if this interpreted means as is said, not for the world which people toil for now in following Ostiense and Tadio, but through his longing after the true manna, he in short time became so great a teacher that he began to go about the vineyard which fadeth soon, if faithless be the dresser. And of the sea that once was more benignant unto the righteous poor, not through itself, but him who sits there and degenerates. Not to dispense, or two, or three, for six, not any fortune of first vacancy, non decimus que sunt pauperum dei, he asked for, but against the errant world permission to do battle for the seed, of which these four and twenty plants surround thee. Then with the doctrine and the will together, with office apostolical he moved, like torrent which some lofty vein outpresses. And in among the shoots heretical his impetus with greater fury smote, wherever the resistance was the greatest. Of him were made thereafter diverse runnels, whereby the garden Catholic is watered, so that more living its plantations stand. If such the one wheel of the biga was, in which the holy church itself defended and in the field its civic battle won, truly full manifest should be to thee the excellence of the other, 
unto whom Thomas so courteous was before my coming. But still the orbit, which the highest part of its circumference made, is derelict, so that the mold is where w was once the crust. His family that had straightforward moved with feet upon his footprints are turned round so that they set the point upon the heel. And soon aware they will be of the harvest of this bad husbandry, when shall the tares complain the granary is taken from them? Yet say I, he who searcheth leaf by leaf our volume through, would still some page discover where he could read, I am as I am wont. Twill not be from castle nor aquasparta, from whence comes such unto the written word that one avoids it and the other narrows. Bonaventura of Bagnorigio's life am I, who always in great offices postponed considerations sinister. Here are Illuminato and Agostino, who of the first barefooted beggars were, that with the cord the friends of God became. Hugh of St. Victor is among them here, and Peter Mangiador, and Peter of Spain, and who down below in volumes twelve is shining. Nathan the seer, the metropolitan Chrysostom, and Anselmus and Donatus, who deigned to lay his hand to the first art. Here is Rabanus, and here beside me shines the Calabrian abbot Joachim, he with the spirit of prophecy endowed. To celebrate so great a paladin have moved me the impassioned courtesy and the discreet discourses of Friar Thomas, and with me they have moved this company. So as promised, Bonaventure steps forward to return St. Thomas the favor of singing a song about St. Dominic, the founder of the Dominican Order. Mark Musa points out that Dominic and Francis are shown to have something of uh, the same sort of story in that they rose up to an occasion where the church was in trouble and renewed it in their own special way. Francis, through his devotion to poverty, and Dominic, through his devotion through to the doctrine, to the understanding of the faith and the intellectual defense of it. And the threat at the time was the Albigensian heresy. The Albigensian heresy was both unique to the time and also not at all. I believe I've talked on this channel before about Gnosticism, the belief that the soul and the body are two completely separate things, that the human being is primarily a soul and the body is all evil, uh, dirt, matter in general is terrible, and you should just shun it all and um, avoid it whenever possible. This leads to a number of unchristian ideas, such as God would never have become a human, uh, he would never have become human and died for us, he would never have given the Eucharist as his body and blood, and furthermore, reception of the Eucharist, if it was even possible, would be something that nobody should ever do because they could never possibly be worthy of it. But in any case, Dominic steps forward as Bonaventure says, God's holy athlete, a great paladin, a great warrior who can combat that heresy, who steps forward preaching the truth and, and, and debating with those who held the Albigensian heresy. And the Dominicans, in fact, to this day, are known for being an order of preachers, an order of intellectual giants that study and learn as much as they can so that they can be great teachers and, and defenders of the faith. Bonaventure himself also introduces a few more souls who are there in the sun that uh, are going to be studied later as part of the great works of Western civilization, namely St. Anselm, who wrote one of the... Uh, proofs of God's existence. I say proof because it relies on a few assumptions, but we'll get to that in more detail whenever I get to St. Anselm's work. I also want to point out the movements of the souls at the beginning of the canto. Dante describes them as forming two concentric circles with each other. So the souls that Thomas was dancing with that he introduced, they form one circle, and then Bonaventure with all the souls that he introduces, they form a second concentric circle. Now, uh, this is important for two reasons. Mark Musa, of course, points out that it's a visual representation of the lives of Dominic and Francis, how even though they're different people, they form different orders, in a way, they're all working towards the same goal. They're all on the same team. They're in harmony with each other. Uh, it's also important because it's not the last time that concentric circles are used uh, very, uh, very poignantly, very symbolically to show something extremely important. I don't want to give it away, but um, much later, Dante will use three concentric circles for something probably the most important of all. I'll leave it at that. Just remember that I said it and be ready for it when it comes. 
That's all for today, though. I'll see you tomorrow.